I'm just gonna, I'm gonna talk, we, we started working on this last year. Uh, and thanks to uh, our friends at Rockefeller Foundation, uh, and then Shala Messina, who's one of the donor advised funds at Impact Assets, uh, and then most recently Halloran, uh, with seed R&D funding, grant funding uh, to us, we've been able to, we, we sort of took it away as a, as, a, as a stretch goal and a dream last year. It was in my head when we, when we walked out of here that we would come back this year being able to at least have a prototype of what I'm gonna talk about for a couple minutes. Um, and, and what it really is, is we, we were really perplexed by how the heck to crack code on seed stage venture investing into social enterprise, um, for profits in particular, and, um, and these just like, intractable, huge barriers to it around uh, the fact that, you know, if you do 50 or $25,000 investments, it costs like half that much to do a good job with due diligence, and, and then there's like, you got all this friction, and then you shouldn't really use very much of your money to do that kind of investing, so you like add it up, and, uh, and it ends up being, you know, you need, a, you need to do a million dollars to get like diversification that way, and then on top of that, you, uh, you end up needing to therefore be worth $20 million. So how the heck do you do it? Meanwhile, how do you find the deals from across the world? And we're like, okay, this is really hard. There's a reason why nobody's doing much of this. Um, and how are we gonna apply this to the impact economy, the good economy, and all the, on the folks? And we, um, we sort of came up with an idea. And um, I'm gonna show you what it is. Seth, actually, Seth is one of our referenceable clients, they call it in the industry, which means I can say his name in public. Um, and, and Seth Goldman, the, the TEO of Honest Tea, uh, is, has lived through the, the hell of being an early stage entrepreneur who cobbled together 25, 50K for years from angel after angel after angel, building an amazing company that he talked about the other day. Um, the, the thing that we figured out was it's too hard to do it in the, in the, in the real world, so, so to speak. So we have this amazing $100 million plus pool of donor advised fund capital. And we're gonna use it starting literally today um, and tomorrow uh, and this fall to begin to invest in waves of social ventures, startup seed stage social ventures, the kinds of people who are here uh, every day uh, at, at SOCAP and, and plow what we think are gonna be really material amounts of additive capital uh, in a way that these angel investors, these people in this room uh, and in, at this conference can actually really enjoy uh, and, and, and make workable um, since there's, uh, there's, there's such a, uh, there's so many like kind of tectonic issues for it. The, um, the, the bottom line is that it's still impossible to figure out how to get these, these, these ventures up on a platform unless you have a partner or a partner structure. So what we did is, and these, and um, there's, there's a number of, of accelerators and seed venture funds and all, all these kind of folks who've been at SOCAP, they're like they're on the ground, they've got skin in the game, they know what these, um, what these ventures look like, and if we use them and, and stand on their shoulders, we can simplify this process greatly um, and make a whole dim sum menu available to this $100 million plus client base immediately um, at, and at some scale. And so we've selected the first two of what will be many. So those of you who are not attached to Village Capital and Hub Ventures who, um, who uh, like the ideas of the stuff I'm talking about, um, the, never fear, we're, we're at the beginning of an iterative development path that's starting now and will be going on over the next few years to bring the, whole, the cohorts of these accelerators and seed funders uh, right up into this asset base and allow tiny investments, 25,000, uh, 2,500, not 25,000. So rather than needing to have millions and millions of dollars, people can have tens of thousands of dollars in their accounts and actually get um, really broad diversification across a whole range of these these folks, and um, and these are these are great great partners for us to launch with. We're really excited. They were both doing breakouts uh, this week, um, but it's going to be really simple. It's basically 
our folks can log into their online platform. They've got their little, there's these, you know, $100 million in all these little accounts, and they're going to see a dim sum menu of the cohorts that come from Village Capital and Hub Ventures, and eventually a whole kind of, you know, range of probably six or eight partners at a time, 20, 30, 40 ventures will be available at any given time, and we'll just keep subscribing little bits of money into them so that we can completely break down these, these constraints that we've been running with. Um, and it, I'm not going to go through these really, but you know it, it, these are anonymized because we can't actually. These are these are sort of modern on, on live deals that'll be on the platform uh, immediately. But um, it, it's just it, totally global in every sense of the word. Um, international, you know, U.S. people, planet, but all early stage, real ventures with great founders that are getting help locally through accelerators and seed funders, able to take tiny, you know, very small investments uh, from a broad range of, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 of our accounts that are, that are able to be aggregated. And so, um, you know, whether it's clean, clean tech or poverty alleviation or some kind of, um, you know, uh, community development affair, whether they're raising 250, 100,000, et cetera, well, we'll be able to keep putting them on this platform and, uh, and, uh, and actually find out um, what the crowd is interested in get real money there in very entrepreneur-friendly ways and that they don't have to deal with 87 people adding up to $112,000, they can just deal with impact assets as a platform. And we will hand them the $112,000 from the 87 uh, accounts. So that's, I mean, that's basically in a nutshell what we've been, um, it, you know, maybe it sounds kind of obvious or why, why wouldn't you do that within a donor advised funding? It's like, you've, it's like a family foundation, you got your tax break, you've set up this account. Um, and if not there, then, then where, would you, where would you be into pushing the envelope on this? But um, this is the first time anything like this has been done within the donor advised fund context to allow people to build totally customized um, personal portfolios of a range of ventures over time, 10, 20, 30, 40 strong, um, is, is pretty much um, brand new ground and we'll see, we'll see how it goes and we'll come back next, uh, next year and we'll, I think we'll be able to actually say like this is what the first you know, 30, 40 investments, but imagine five, 10 years from now, you know, 30, 40 becomes 300, 400, hundreds of people, thousands of people over time, tens of millions of dollars, you actually have an amazing petri dish to watch, not, not to mention the incremental money going to the entrepreneurs, but to really field build around to understand like what trends are, what impact looks like, what failure rates are, um, and, it's, and I think it's, uh, it's good stuff. I wanted to actually invite, I'm going to just for a couple minutes, John Goldstein out, uh, who I think a lot of you know, he, he founded and is a uh, principal at, at Imprint Capital, but that is actually is not why I'm technically inviting him out. I was, so I'm sitting there a few, uh, few months ago when we were going into R&D and on this, and we're doing a catch up. I, we were on the phone, I'm sitting in my, honestly, I was in my pajamas, <laughs> sorry, um, at home, my home office, and I'm like, so blah, 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 all this blah, 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 firm to firm, like here's how we could work together. And then I'm like, oh, let me tell you about this thing that I've been dreaming about, and that we're really close to actually starting to think about doing, and I'm desperately looking around for beta testers, clients. And I, did, I forgot to mention, we've got like 12 or 15 of our favorite clients like Seth, who've all agreed to put initially over half a million dollars just to, into that platform to start. So we're gonna launch forwards with really good money. Um, and John became part of it because so I run the phone with him and I'm like, so John, here's this thing. And he's like, I get it. All right, I'm in. I'm like, oh yeah, right, blah blah blah. He's not. A, he wasn't a donor advised fund client of ours Great at the time. You had that kind of faith in me. Uh, yeah, and so I'm like, okay, fine. I hang up the phone. I get an email in my inbox, and it's like the receipt from his Fidelity donor advised fund. He's like cleaned out. I'm not going to say whatever. I mean, nameless some money, national debt. Some money. Some nameless national brand that doesn't do. Doesn't even know how to think about what the heck I'm talking about, much less do it. And. And it's like he's, he's transferred this, this chunk of money to become part of this, like right there. And I thought that was like, oh, we're onto something. You know, that's cool. But I just wanted to give you like a, um, a couple minutes just to kind of talk about just from a personal investor, yeah. you know, seed stage wannabe. I mean, you're not a wannabe, you're a serious investor. Like, what, what do you think about this? Well, <laughs> John Goldstein, non wannabe. No. No, I, I think, you know, I spend so much of my days soberly, seriously, in a very you know, constructive, process-oriented manner, making decisions about impact investments. And they're 
so few opportunities for me to step back from that as a person, as an individual, and, and, and do it for myself. And much less to do it in something that's so important and so central and so hard to do as the early stage work. And so when Tim said it, this chance, you know, in my day job, I can't act quickly. I can't act that nimbly. I have processes and organizations. As a person, I can do that. And I think to have something where that was my response, and I, I think it is fair to say I do have a reasonable basis for comparison of what's out there, and I think it just, it really resonated as, as the intersection of two really important things. I, I think number one as, has come up you know, throughout this whole session and last year and the year before is the importance of early stage. And how do you do that? How do you give the capital, the capacity to support to the, the, the honesties of the future? H how do we do that? Because it's hard. Right? It's hard. These are small transactions sometimes in hard to reach places with new business models. And that's hard. And they're really smart people, you know, like Village Capital, like all these incubators, accelerators trying to do that. And they need more money. <laughs> and meanwhile, you've got this wave of innovation for donor advised funds. The money that by all accounts should be doing more work, working harder than it is. And this wave of innovation from impact assets to RSF to others to kind of push the envelope of how does that money do what it should do? which is go to social purpose, have an impact, and sort of this intersection of harnessing all this great work done to build the early stage ecosystem, but that needs a lot more money, hint, hint to all of you here, um, and, and, and ways to give more on-ramps to more people to unleash those dollars. And I think it's just such an important next step in it, and just, I was really excited just to have a chance to be invited and to participate in it, and hope other folks will join, and, and hope that it continues to raise the bar as innovations of, of all sorts, both on the seed stage and the DAF side, continue to push the boundaries of, of, of what's possible. So I think you know, the gauntlet has been laid out, and we'll see what's next. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, John. Thank you so much. My hero, and uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, it'll probably be about you know, 20, 30, 40 Johns this fall, just beta testing this, get that first half million, 750,000, maybe a million dollars in, then we can open up to our next 600 clients, uh, the, the 100 million folks, and see, see what, what goes in, and then we'll begin to work it you know, in social media and the press and invite more people to come on, and, and, and really this is just a jumping off point. Not only will we come back next year and tell you honestly what happened, and it, it may not be pretty, I'm sorry. You never know. You never know. I, know the, I know the first 12 folks like that will do it. After that, you, you, you try to listen um, and, and then react, and we'll, we'll tweak it. Um, there, there's, there's two things that are going to happen, though, if this goes well next. One is we'll unpack this plumbing, this, this thrilling in, in infrastructure, as I, we were saying in this last panel that a lot of people weren't here for, but um, this idea of really making this both, you know, super well done, but also uh, really fun to do, like breaking down the barriers so that John can be like, I can really support these 10, 12, 15 entrepreneurs that I could never normally do with real investment capital. Um, we'll make this available to other donor advised funds as tech, meaning we will let them embed, or we'll just steal their clients if they don't learn. I mean, honestly, that's what's going to happen. Just like that. That was, there's, there's the, you know, the first use case is that unnamed national a, you know, juggernaut lost that account, and it came to us because this is sexier than anything that they can come up with. Um, so that's cool. Uh, but the other thing that's really cool, and I wanted to, I don't know if uh, Jason around? Oh, Jason Rosado from GiveQuick uh, has been helping me think through this. And, you know, we're just kind of in the R&D, like, what does this look like? But imagine, heck with, like, 1,000, 25, we're going to start with 2,500, we can drop it lay, down lower with the donor advised funds once we're sure we got the kind of <laughs> ops worked out. But what if this was in your pocket on your smartphone? And what if it was 25 bucks instead of 2,500 and you could get a tax break, open up a tiny micro donor advised fund, get your tax break day one, put 500 bucks in it and do like 20 and actually watch them. It's sort of like Kiva, but like real equity investments that would come back, you get your tax break up front, come back to your micro tiny little thing, and then you could pay it forwards or give it away to your, your church or your alma mater or your Amnesty International or whatever. And that's the thing, you can't buy a Ferrari with it. 
we think that's really cool. And, uh, and, and Jason's gonna, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna work with Jason and other folks uh, in, the, in the kind of crowd online mobile to really uh, make that. I don't know, I'm not gonna promise that next year we come back, we'll actually have that, that demoed for you, but I, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and I also wanted to acknowledge that, um, that givequick.com, um, givequick, I don't, do I have a? Uh, I think there was a, a thing up there. They're in the middle of uh, doing a, a crowdfunder um, or an Indiegogo. Sorry, sorry, Danae Ringelman. Um, uh, uh, Indiegogo campaign. You're like pretty far along, right? We're halfway there. Halfway there. A lot thanks to some people in this room. And I, so go go check out Give Quick. But I, I think that's really exciting. Uh, and I encourage you to go check online. And we're really looking forward to being kind of transparent and accountable to how this rolls out over the next 12 months to come back and say, here are the stories of success and failure. Here's how investors are responding to this. Here's what ventures got funded. Here's the new partners. You know, and we'll, we'll try to commit to publishing that uh, out to the field and, uh, and, and really uh, seeing if we can build a sandbox we can all look at around this. But also track the success of these ventures. And, um, and with that, I think I'm good on time. I can't tell, it's, the clock kept getting resetting, but I, I'm pretty good, right? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Um, Lindsay, did I forget anything? There's a great issue brief on seed investing, seed stage um, investing that Lindsay co-authored with Jed Emerson in our uh, online issue brief series that's at impactassets.org. Org. Um, there's uh, you can, different points of view on all sorts of stuff, but the number 11 in a series of, of 11 um, is, uh, is on seed stage investing and was a great landscape of sort of like, what are, the, what are the real sticking points here? What does it need to look like? And, and we actually use that as a thinly veiled R&D cover to try to get current thinking to embark upon the actual development of this platform in Skunk Works over the last four or five months. Um, so it was pretty rapid prototyping. We got a little funding. Again, thanks Halloran, thanks Shala, thanks Rockefeller Foundation. You know, did a little bit of research, you can read it online, and then built this thing and it's, it's sort of version one and on board of the first two of many partners and probably the first will start with 12, 15, 20 ventures. And the, the investments team at Impact Assets, which I can see glaring at me over there, um, it did a fantastic job, as did the ops team in, in, in putting this together. So thanks for being a place where we can dream up this kind of stuff and then push ourselves to come back and actually have done something, because honestly, that's what happened in the last, it's only been 11 months, because I think it was October last year that, that stuff was, was going on here on this. So again, thanks a lot. <laughs>